Another formal test that allows us to detect autocorrelation is the very famous Darwin-Watson d-test. On this slide, you can see the formula that is used for calculating the d-statistic. You don't need to remember it. However, what you need to keep in mind is the assumptions underlying the Darwin-Watson d-test. So first of all, your regression model must include the intercept term. So if there is no intercept term in your model, the d-test cannot be used. The explanatory variables, the axis, they must be fixed in repeated sampling. So in other words, they must be constant. But this is the assumption that I think is quite easy to meet because all of the time our axes are fixed. The third assumption is that the error term must follow the first order autoregressive scheme. So unfortunately, this test is not valid when we have higher order autoregressive schemes. The error term should also be normally distributed. The fifth assumption is that there should be no lag values of the dependent and independent variables. So unfortunately, once again, you cannot use this test when your model, when your regression model includes some lag values. And the last assumption is that there should be no missing observations in the data. And now let's have a look at the decision rule. So this is the schematic way it can be approached. So the null hypothesis is that there is no positive autocorrelation or alternative null hypothesis is that there is no negative autocorrelation. Uh, from this graph, you can also see that we will need two values, dl and du, so the upper and the lower boundaries. Those are the values that we get from the table for the darwin watson d test. I will share them with you in my files, or you can also find them on the internet. And let's see. So if our estimated d statistic lies between zero and lower boundary, then we reject the null hypothesis. So we reject that there is positive autocorrelation, that there is no positive autocorrelation, and we accept the hypothesis that there is positive autocorrelation. If our estimated d statistic lies between the upper and the lower boundary, then this is the zone of indecision. So unfortunately, in this zone, we cannot make any conclusion about the state of autocorrelation, whether it is present, whether it is not present, whether it is positive, negative. So here we cannot make any decision. If our estimated d statistic lies between 4 minus du and du, in this case, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So we say that there is no autocorrelation in this zone. However, if we are between 4 minus du and 4 minus dl, again, we're in the zone of indecision. So unfortunately, in this zone, we cannot make any decision about the state of autocorrelation. So it means that we will have to do additional testing. And if we are between 4 and 4 minus dl, in this case, we reject the null that there is no negative autocorrelation, which means that there is negative autocorrelation. Here, I have also summar summarized what I've just said in a table. So it's, it's really up to you which, um, uh, which decision rule scheme to use, either the graphical one or the table one. Personally, I prefer the graphical one, but I believe that some of you might find this one more convenient. An interesting uh, fact about Darwin Watson is that it can also be calculated using the, uh, the raw coefficient or the estimated first order coefficient of autocorrelation, right? The one that we get from here, from this equation. So, uh, and it is calculated in the following way. So D is approximately equal to two multiplied by one minus estimated coefficient of autocorrelation. And since uh, the, we've discussed before, uh, the raw coefficient lies between negative one and one, the D statistic will lie between four and zero. So let's see if, for example, a raw coefficient is equal to negative one, we get one minus minus one, so actually two, and D is equal to four. And if a row is equal to one, we get that one minus one is zero, two by zero, this statistic is equal to zero. So those are the boundaries. And uh, there is the rule of thumb that can be used when we discuss Darwin Watson D test results. So if row is equal to zero, we get this is one minus zero. So Darwin Watson is equal to two. 
So, which means that if D is found to be two, so if Darwin Watson is equal to two, one may assume that there is no first order autocorrelation, either positive or negative. So whenever you get a result of the D statistic that is close to two, very, very close or equal to two, then you can conclude that there is no autocorrelation or no first order autocorrelation.